There's something wrong with the house on Ash Tree Lane. One fourth of an inch wrong, in fact. The inside of the house on Ash Tree Lane is one fourth of an inch bigger than the outside. But wait, that doesn't make sense. How could. The house on Ash Tree Lane is also, in essence, a memory. Well, at this point, more of a memory within a memory within a memory, which may have never even existed in the first place. A message passed from one person to the next, in an uneasy game of telephone, against books, films, web forums. Let's talk about Mark Z. Danieleski's 2000 horror novel, House of Leaves. To address the elephant in the room, uh, yes, Super Eye Patch Wolf just made a video about liminal horror um, and had a section dedicated to House of Leaves. This guy cannot stop taking my video ideas. Just kidding. I have like 2,000 subscribers and he has well over a million. He is not stealing my ideas. <laughs> but his video is really good and you should go watch it. I'm going to go about the topic from kind of a different angle. I specifically want to talk about the liminality of memory. To provide a quick definition, liminal space is a location which is a transition between two other locations or states of being. Think hotels, airports, rest stops, you get it, right? It is the in-between. If you want to learn more about liminal spaces as a whole, I'm going to once again point you towards that Super Eye Patch Wolf video. A big aspect of what people usually refer to as liminal space is the nostalgic feeling it invokes. Take this image, or this one, or wait, maybe this. How does it make you feel? Maybe like you've been there before? Maybe it takes you back to a specific memory from your childhood, with certain smells and sounds attached. If you grew up in the late 90s or early 2000s at least, you probably passed through a place like one of these pictures on your road to becoming a fully realized adult. If liminal spaces are what's between what was and what's next, that makes memories inherently liminal in nature and explains why these images come with a nostalgic, sometimes off-putting, or even comforting feeling. They remind us of a time when we were in between. There's a lack of identity that comes with being in a liminal space, especially when it comes to the nostalgic memory side of things. You have left one solid place and have not yet reached the next. In this space, you can become whoever you want to be. Take for example that feeling you get in an airport. Nobody knows you there and you'll likely never see any of these people again. You can be whoever you want to be at that place in that moment. Memories are like that as well. It's well documented that human memory is incredibly pliable, which is one of the reasons witness testimony is seen as so unreliable. Did not mean to rhyme there. <laughs> At least in my own experience, I know for a fact that I've tweaked certain memories to create a past version of myself that better fits the present. For example, I've always seen myself as a fairly creative person. And when I think back on my teen years, I see someone who's confident, outgoing, and always thinking outside of the box. I recall instances where I 
pushed boundaries and stood up for myself. But did these instances really happen how I remember them? Probably not. I mean, I was a super hula kid. And if you really looked back at your own memories, I bet you'd be surprised to find the same. Sometimes, however, these nostalgic memories are off. In a way that was never intended or manufactured by you, lending themselves to a sense of anxiety and horror. Sometimes our memories have been misplaced, even if only by a quarter of an inch. House of Leaves is not a traditional novel. There are many narratives nested inside of each other like Russian dolls. At the core is the Navidson Record, a film released by Pulitzer Prize-winning photographer Will Navidson. This is the guy who owns the house that's too big on the inside. Then we have the Navidson Record text, a work-in-progress film critique of that original movie, written by the enigmatic Zampano. Zampano? Realizing now I've never said that out loud. <laughs> a blind old man with an affinity for cats. This makes up about half of the actual meat of House of Leaves. The other half is where we find our protagonist, Johnny Truant. Johnny's friend Lude, who was also Zampano's neighbor, found Zampano's critique draft amongst other clippings and ramblings after his passing and gave the document to Johnny, who is now sharing it with us. Telling us about his own life and how the Navidson record has been affecting him via footnotes. Very, very long footnotes. But the spiral doesn't end there. We also get footnotes from the editors of House of Leaves, who are trying their best to fill in the blanks left by Johnny and Zampano. So to recap, House of Leaves is a book released and edited by Random House in 2000. The content of the book was given to Random House for publication by Johnny Truant, who made it an obsessive goal for himself to finish the work of a man named Zampano, about a film called The Navidson Record, wherein Will Navidson's house is one fourth of an inch too big on the inside. Got it? <laughs> right from the introduction, Johnny tells us that no one seems to have ever heard of the Navidson record. Or Will Navidson, for that matter. After all, as I fast discovered, Zampano's entire project is about a film which doesn't even exist. You can look, I have, but no matter how long you search you will never find the Navidson record in theaters or video stores. See, the irony is it makes no difference that the documentary at the heart of this book is fiction. His story is a misplaced memory that may or may not have happened. Zampano leaves his own footnotes, referencing sources that don't exist, sprinkled amongst ones that do. Johnny himself is proven to be an unreliable narrator pretty early on, admitting to tampering with the original text. Now I'm sure you're wondering something. Is it just coincidence that this cold water predicament of mine also appears in this chapter? Not at all. Zampano only wrote heater. The word water back there I added that. Now that's an admission, eh. As we've already discussed, there's something inherently liminal about memory. There is no solid ground to stand on when trying to decipher House of Leaves. Sometimes literally. The house on Ashtree Lane is always changing, always in the in-between. That extra fourth of an inch soon grows into an entirely new room, not found on any floor plan, wedged in between the master bedroom and the children's room. This is unsettling enough to send the family into disarray. I mean, rooms don't just appear, do they? But this extra room is still just the beginning. The real liminal terror of this core narrative 
begins when a seemingly endless hallway appears in the Navidson's living room. After multiple explorations of the hallway, it's soon discovered that it's always changing, shifting, growing, shrinking, sometimes boasting great halls and spiral staircases, sometimes tiny rooms and endless ramps into the abyss. Navidson and his colleagues, as well as those who have seen the film, try to theorize explanations for this liminal space. Maybe it shifts based on the current explorer's mental state. Maybe it's simply a case of movie magic. Perhaps the whole thing is a case of mass hallucination. Or maybe the land on Ash Tree Lane has always been home to this never-ending, ever-shifting labyrinth that's home to an invisible minotaur. Okay, Mr. Monster. I know you're there and you're planning to eat me and there's nothing I can do about that, but I should warn you I've lived for years on fast food, greasy fried, more than a few polyurethane shakes. I smoke a lot of weed too. Got a pair of lungs blacker than Rotar. My point being, Mr. Monster, I don't taste so good. The house quite literally swallows Navidson whole, much like the book seems to do to Johnny. House of Leaves is an incredibly unique book, and not just for the reasons we've already talked about, but also because of the physical print of the book itself. In some editions, the typeset is slightly off whenever the word house is used. In others, house is always printed in blue. When a character is crawling through a tight space, the words on the page are physically crammed into small boxes. Sometimes words are printed upside down and backwards, forcing the reader to turn the book 360 degrees to finish the chapter. As Navidson and Johnny both descend into madness, so does the book itself, leaving the reader to solve nonsensical puzzles to try and fill in the blanks. The House on Ash Tree Lane and the book House of Leaves are in a sense one and the same. All consuming, always changing, liminal labyrinths. In fact, by taking the time to write, edit, and film this video, I may be falling into the same trap that consumed Johnny, Zampano, and Will trying to find purpose and identity among the liminality of a memory which may have never even happened. Speaking of Johnny, I think we really need to talk about Johnny, just for a second. Johnny, along with Zampano, is one of our main narrators. His discovery of Zampano's work is the framing device for the book. He's also a liar. He's established as a liar from the very beginning. A storyteller trying to hit on women or soothe his mother's worries or piece together an obscure piece of film criticism. His identity is always changing. In one set of fish notes, he's a deep sea fisherman. Actually, I escaped. I improvised. See, I still owed my crazy Russian captain a thousand dollars for a wager I'd lost in Singapore. He wanted to murder me, so I practically had to run the whole way to Houston. Don't forget to tell them about the birds, Lud winked. He was just throwing shit at me something he loved doing, keeping me on my toes. Sure, I mumbled, stretching for an explanation. This barge I'd been on was loaded with dates and pounds of hash and an incredible number of exotic birds, all oh fit, of course, illegal to transport. In others, he's a rookie boxer. All month long, he and his partner had been boosting the numbers on me so that when punching back, and at this point he was the long shot, slaughtered me, they'd walk away with a small fortune. Or run. Most of the time, though, he works at a tattoo shop. These stories and identities seem to be crafted out of necessity, as Johnny attempts to outrun his troubled past, filled with abusive foster fathers, mentally unwell mothers, and dead dads. 
Much like the Navidson record, it's almost impossible to decipher what's real and what's not. Like, who is Johnny Truant, actually? What about his friend Lude, who showed him Zampano's work in the first place? Or the stripper called Thumper, who Johnny develops an unhealthy obsession with? Do any of these people actually exist? We've defined what a liminal space is, and established that memories exist in those spaces. But what about a liminal person? Ahem. Liminal beings are those that cannot easily be placed into a single category of existence, associated with the threshold state of liminality, from the Latin limen, threshold. They represent and highlight the semi-autonomous boundaries of the social world. You could argue that out of all of our narrators, Johnny, Navidson, Zampano, Johnny is actually the least liminal. He's the one we speak to directly, after all. The person who's getting the last say in this chain of narratives. Aside from the editors. He is the most real person we encounter. But is he? We know about Will Navidson, whether he existed or not. We know firm facts about his career, his childhood, his family. We also begin to uncover facts about Zampano. His affinity for cats, his lost loves, his blindness. His life is more muddled than that of Will Navidson, more obscured by lack of record, but also fairly firm. If one figure can't be placed into a single category of existence, it's Johnny. We cannot trust him and we cannot trust what others tell us about him. His committed mother being our only outside source of information. Not only is the house and the book falling apart at the seams, but so is our narrator. Wow, not doing so well. But where else to turn? What mistakes have been made? A sudden vertigo of loss, when looking down, or is it really looking back, leaves me experiencing all of it at once which is way too much. Now, you didn't think the layers stopped there, did you? If you read House of Leaves, you will have questions. What is this quote from? What is this translation? Is this source real? When these questions inevitably come up, you're probably going to do what I did. Google it. Google will lead you to the web forums. House of Leaves was released at the turn of the millennia, the dawn of the modern internet. And back then, readers had questions just like we do. So they created online communities to talk about it. Have you ever watched abandoned mall videos? These massive structures stuck in time. Time capsules with geometric carpeting and buzzing lights. These mall videos are a great example of liminal space. A place lost to time that people passed through. And these old web forums are just like that. Outdated pages that haven't been updated since 2002 offering wisdom to users with the same questions 20 years later. Old internet comes up a lot in liminal imagery. And I just think it's so fitting that these dusty old forums are what comes up when you Google questions about House of Leaves. Really just the icing on this liminal horror cake. And I am getting very tired of saying the word liminal. <laughs> It can be scary to be in between, to not be certain, to not know what could be lurking in distant memories. And that anxiety is what makes House of Leaves so great. One day our current internet will become the old liminal space of dusty web forums. The home you're sitting in right now will become vacant, one way or another. Our memories will become more and more warped as we age. And that is really, really 
scary. Hi guys. Um, wow. What was getting this video out a journey? <laughs> If you aren't aware, I actually already filmed this video like two weeks ago. Um, I also edited about half of it and then my hard drive got fried. <laughs> so we had to order a new hard drive, um, try to see if anything could be recovered. Nothing could, hence why I'm here. Um, and now here I am refilming this which I really hope you enjoyed. <laughs> if you did enjoy it, why not give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe if you wanna see more. And if you wanna support the channel, links to my Patreon and some merch are in the link tree down below. I really, really appreciate any support so much. <laughs> it's unbelievable, literally anyone wants to support this. <laughs> And if you didn't like the video, grow up. Bye. A big aspect of what people usually refer to as, geez, I can't stop like burping. <laughs>